The Nigerian Port Authority recognizes that the excellence in health, safety and environment performance is critical to successful port operations which aligns with the operational mission to deliver efficient port service in a safe, secured and customer-friendly environment. This is Nigerian Port today. Sit back, let's sail together as we have a load lined up for you in this episode. Welcome to the new seat bit. My name is Abiyan Eddy. The Nigerian Port Authority Managing Director Hadi Zabala Usman received the steering committee of the Maritime Anti-Corruption Network MACN, who paid a courtesy call at the corporate headquarters Marina office. The committee solicited for a window through which the existing collaborations with the Nigerian Port Authority will be deepened and the inference bring greater efficiency in binding standard operating procedures in the sector. History was made as the Nigerian Port Authority, Riversport, bettered Nigerian liquidified national gas NLNG vessel LPG by her name, Navigator Capricorn. This is the first time LNG products is bought direct as people in South South go to Lagos for purchase as this would save costs and logistics issues. The jetty has an 8,000 capacity tank, LPG Navigator Capricorn, with length overall of 160 meters, with cargo retained. This is among many of the achievements of the dogmatic and amiable leadership led by Managing Director, Nigeria Port Authority, Hadi Zabala Usman, in reviving all the nation's seaports and making them functional. The Managing Director, Nigeria Port Authority, Hadi Zabala Usman, attended the oil and gas workshop held in Lagos. It was a one-day event on the theme, Mainstream Women in the Oil and Gas Industry in Lagos. She addressed the participants on the need to encourage women into leadership roles across board in order to give them the opportunity in contributing most meaningfully in bringing the dividend of good governance in the sector. Also in attendance were women from all maritime sector. That's all for now. My name is Obiyana Ju Eddy and I hand over back to Scott for the rest of the program. Rivers Port was the first port to be established east of the Niger opened for business in 1913 to shipping by the then Governor General Lord Lugard. The railway to Enugu was opened so that coal could be loaded from rail to ship. Well, the port manager in Jinai Junusa, Angie, shared with us the current state of the port and his plan to improve it for better, from the revenue to a better working environment. Let's enjoy this. From West Africa to Nigeria, down to Port Accord, the capital of Rivers, the chief oil refining state, a Bonny Channel Company, established to ensure safe navigation of Bonny Channel and Bonny Rivers to eastern port of Bonny, Bonne, Port Accord, and Okrika. At BCC, we carefully and professionally plan, manage, execute maintenance, capital dredging works, wreck removals, maintenance of aids of navigation quarterly bathmetric surveys and management training of the Nigerian Port Authority officials. Our mission is to engender an environment of safe and efficient navigation of vessels in and out of port and harbors of Bonny. BCC is a joint venture partnership between the Nigerian Port Authority and the channel management company TCM. BCC clearing the way for safe navigation. The history of port development in Nigeria dates back to the mid-19th century, long after the onset of seaborne trade that followed the early coastal exploration. The federal government of Nigeria initiated a drive to improve efficiency with its port reforms programs implemented in 2005-2006 and adopted the landlord model of port management. The key principle of this concession model is to transfer cargo operational obligations to private operators while retaining public ownership of the port infrastructure. Port Harcourt was the first port to be established east of the Niger and the second oldest in the country after the Lagos port complex at Papa. The port is being managed by two terminal operators and over 20 private jetties. 
Terminal A is operated by Pulse and Terminal Operator Limited, PTOL, handles multipurpose, and Terminal B, BUA Ports and Terminal Limited, which handles bulk cargo. Distance from Fairway Boy, 48 nautical miles, turning basin 200 meters. Developed land area 58 hectares, container handling capacity 200,000 TEU, key length 704 meters, access channel depth 9.5 meters, berth 8, rail connection available, inland waterway connection yes, operation security level 1, average turnaround time 6.85 days, berth occupancy rate 37.67% and total number of boys 32. River Sports Global Statistical Data Ship Traffic 309 Container Traffic 2,198 TEU and Cargo Throughput 3,536,873 TEU I discovered that River Port is actually a unique port in the sense that the location of the port itself within the eastern part of Nigeria is doing south south, but it's very near to the southeast, where much of the commercial center or activities take place in terms of import and export. That is an advantage. And the most so, you know, River Port was actually created to handle coal export, you know, because in the east they have much deposit of the coal. And River Port initially was created for that, to handle coal, export of coal. Outside, to outside the country. Apart from that, Liverpool has a very co good connectivity of network routes to the hinterlands. That movement of goods from the port to the north to the east, it makes it easier. Then Liverpool again has what we call the rail system. It has a rail system which is connected to the port. You can move the goods from the port to the railway station and it can move to other parts of the country. The river port is unique in the sense that this is an area that produces the quantum of oil, crude oil. So because of that, it's easier to handle some of the goods that come here in and out of the country. The movement of crude oil from out of the country, because when the vessel comes, they must use the port to load and offload it. And river port is unique because of the facility on ground. It has good facilities that people can use. Turnaround time is very short for vessels to make business here. Then river port has some other features that have just been done recently in terms of international rules and regulations, guidelines on pollution control. Then river port is also unique in the sense that, as I said, the facilities on ground is much to serve the business or unit. That is one of the, some of the unique in the river port. The vice president gave that order for ease of doing business because of the problem we have on, in, in terms of congestion within the port. And NPA management take it on a very serious note because the present management does joke with what we call placing NP in the next level. And because of that, orders have been given. Unlike before that, agencies operating in the port were so many. Apart from that, in the past, each agency went to go to the vessel to inspect the vessel according to their rules and regulations differently. Those, those aspects delay the vessel on the bat, which is not in tandem with international rules and regulations or practices, international best practices. All agencies must board the vessel at the same time, which is being implemented seriously here. We don't allow any agency to go on board in isolation. We also educate these shipping companies. If your vessel is coming to the port, ensure that you inform the, all the agency that are supposed to enter the, uh, the vessel at the same time to meet at the key airport at the same time to enter the vessel so that they won't delay the vessel. 
So because that is one of the aspects of the presidential order, it's very, very important. Delaying of vessels, it makes business flow. Then another aspect of the order is that ensuring that availability of equipment for discharge and loading is there. We are monitoring. We are not providing equipment any longer, apart from the marine equipment which we have. For aspect of marine equipment, management is ensuring that all the marine equipment that we're supposed to provide for the operations of the bringing vessel to the bat by our pilots, they are there, they are provided, they are purchasing new ones that are even coming from China very soon. So that aspect is being handled by the Nigerian Post Authority. But the other aspect of handling equipment is being done by the concessionaires. When the Port Authority, because you know that our port has been concessioned since 2006, so we ensure that we monitor them to have and advise them to have adequate handling equipment so that it won't delay or have excess or goods being stuck at the care prone or at the terminals. And we also ensure that recently the safety department introduced what we call minimum standard. Because in those days of the trucks that enter the port, the trucks that are not in good condition, the gates uh, break down and that one cause a lot of traffic jam within the port. But in river ports here, we keep to such a regulation and guidelines very, very well that our safety people continuously checking and monitor every truck that enter the port so that they won't cause any congestion within the port. So then another one is driven of services, which is one of the key performance indicators. It's part of the is way of doing business. In the sense that if you process the document of the agent or the shipping companies fast, they will be happy. They would like to do business within the port, with your port. To have a system called RINS. Our functions include raising of provisional bid, raising of final bid, raising of throughput fees for concessionaire, raising of lease fee for concessionaire, raising of general billing for third parties that are coming into the port, and raising of what we call service boat base. These are our sources of revenue generation. And this revenue generation have improved since our new port manager came in place. That one has made everything easy for businessmen within the port. So those are the aspects we have to make sure that it's being implemented within our port here. And I believe with my interaction with the agents during the batting meeting, none of them has ever reported to me that their document is being delayed. The functions of traffic department in Riversport is to read data that is used in generating revenue for the port. And this data comes from vessels that calls at the ports, and also vessels and trams that calls at the private jetties. It will interest you to know that Riversport has the highest number of private jetties. We have private jetties scattered all over. So most of the revenue is generated from private jetties because we have our petroleum products that calls at the private jetties. And these data are gotten from them, from traffic department, which is sent to the tariff and billing department to raise revenue. In every situation, there are a lot of challenges. And Protocol Port should not be an exception, even in Lagos. Like we don't have our youth going on rampage because of one thing or the other, or community interfering. Challenges are there. But Protocol Port is a peculiar place. But I will tell you that it was rampant in those days. But the advent of the new management with their thinking about relationship with the communities, because our present management or group, they believe in interaction with the community. And I know any business you are doing and you have good relationship on and off meetings, knowing their needs, knowing what they want, this management is doing everything possible from our head office. They have what we call CSR. That is our corporate social responsibilities that the managements are taking it on a very serious note, unlike like before, to help the communities, to go to their, the community, know their needs, and search any complaint they have, like project, providing of water, books, or even renovating schools. 
these managements have been doing a lot for the communities. Even to the extent that the management give us some support at our port level to ensure that we also do the little. If the project is little at our level, that is at, at our own level, we handle that. So if you stay here for some time, you see one or two community heads or youth to come here for one assistant or the other. And they promise us, they will tell us with their mind that with what you are doing, we will make sure the community will not do any rampage. But the other one we have, the aspect of encroachment to some of our properties, which is still very normal. Even the properties belong to MPA. Some of them encroaches, but amicably, the management is handling it the way it's supposed to be done internationally. So the relationship is cordial because we always hold meetings from time to time. And uh, I can tell you that since I resume here, we never had anything, community restiveness, since I came to this port. The mission of the organization is to deliver efficient service in a safe, secure and customer-friendly environment. When the port manager assumed duty, he shared his vision with us. He took a facility tour of the ports, made observations, he had meetings with stakeholders to hear their challenges. And most of the challenges he got from them, he has started working on them. I believe by the time he leaves the port, the port will be a transformed one. When I resumed, the first and foremost thing I did was to tour each of the stakeholders or facilities, the concessionaires, then the shipping agents, the custom, the police. We have commissioner of police within the port here. We sit down and talk about the security in case we have such a situation. So, so far so good. Our relationship is good. We don't have any crisis with any of our stakeholders for now since I came here. We want to thank you know, the Nigerian Port Authority for most of what they've done uh, to take care of the initial challenges that this terminal faced. One of such challenges then was uh, in the area of restriction of certain types of cargo uh, coming from coming you know, to the terminal. Uh, there were cargoes that were termed oil and gas related cargo. Uh, which, of course, uh, that limitation has been lifted and uh, we are able to also handle such cargoes here. If there's even, even anything uh, that could be termed oil and gas related cargo, because in terms of cargo morphology, there is no such nomenclature, no such terms. We, in NP, is an organization that have setting guidelines and uh, rules that guide us that are operating in different units for achieving maximum output. And that is key performance indicator. If I enter my office, I'll pick the book, look at it, know the guidelines or all the indicators, and ensure that even in the, what we call monthly meeting of the officers, we emphasize on that, to ensure that each department carry out quick delivery with very friendly environment and safe environment. For channels, we have a standby uh, company that is dredging and maintaining our channels. Because that is what can affect performance or the vessels. Because any vessel that comes to the port and run a grant, no other uh, shipping agent will bring a vessel to this place. So we make sure that we have a standby, uh, management make sure they have a standard, uh, standby company that dredge the water channel every day and they were in touch with them to see that they are doing the work. Then, again, the officers are people that are hardworking, I met them here, and they are hardworking. They ensure that implementation of all the key indicators are you know, complied with. Security level, every day as you enter the port, you should know how they attend to you. Then, you talk of environment, you clean it from time to time. We will ensure that infrastructures are provided the way they're supposed to provide. And we promote competence and professionalism. We allow our boys to go on courses. We educate them from time to time. So most of the key indicators that the management has brought out as guidelines, we follow them strictly to the core to ensure that our customers actually have the best of services. As educated person, I find it difficult to find a word or sentence to describe her 
the type of person she is and the leadership quality she has because it's beyond our own thinking I'm, as a person beyond my thinking as a young lady that came to us she came with the value of achieving something we saw that in her immediately she came had meeting with her during the meetings that briefing we saw that interest she has for Nigerian Post Authority and since she entered there have been drastic changes she has been carrying out transformation is making sure that Nigerian Post Authority is at the next level any person that take over from her what she's laying down right now is to lay a kind of permanent legacy that any other person that is taking a young post or taking over a young post authority as MD will not be able to change the foundation he has laid so far. That was the staff welfare, she doesn't joke with it. Infrastructure, she doesn't joke with it. It makes sure that the revenue generation emphasizes on that. That every tax, that every staff and officer should know whether you are a cleaner, your job is very important for to move NPA into the next level. So because of that, everybody is aware of what he gives us, that is the responsibilities you have. She makes sure that employees are spread out. So she doesn't joke. If someone that comes to work early, setting an example, he doesn't come and start staying at the gates and want to arrest any person. Then she will come and since he resumed, I can bet you that no single document, if you send the document to her office, that is one thing I have learned from her also. If you send her document to her, send any document to her office, before the closing of the work on that very day, you will get a reply on that document. Our MD is someone that is very, very difficult to, to define in terms of leadership because I can say it with the recent course I went on leadership qualities, I look at her as a leader, not a, a manager because her leadership impacts on all the officers and staff too, from the top to the head, to the, to the bottom. She doesn't need to shout before people, you know, do what they're supposed to do. She lives by example and she has that sympathy for humanity. If you take over an organization as an engineer, we always say that you have to re-engineer the place. Putting my best to ensure that Riverport becomes a different port before I leave. In terms of service delivery, to meet up uh, KPR, that's our uh, key performance indication. We have to ensure that we achieve it. That is service delivery on time, good environment, which I'm an environmentalist, I don't joke with that. Then, you know, safe environment. As a HSE or uh, professional also, I ensure that every day I, I communicate with my peers. So what is happening at the gate, what is happening within the port, for some period of time now, the port has been calm, relatively calm. No more security challenges. And again, I can, I can categorically say that since the arrival of the new port manager, there have been new measures in place to ensure that the port operates seamlessly without any security breaches. And that's what we are working towards today. Put those things there for Riverport is one of the poor that people that own us are so numerous and uh, we have set up a committee to recover this debt. I have an able uh, officer that is in charge of a chairman of the debt recovery. We have started doing my visit, I chat with them, the way out to pay the debt. I told them you may not, if you have 10 million to pay, you don't need to wait until you get that 10 million. Give us five, we we'll reduce your debt. So I'm encouraging them with interaction and many of them are coming up with such all these things. So the legacy I want to leave also is to have meetings and chat with some importers that are taking their goods to, to Lagos ports. Because Lagos is the center of uh, most of the vessels now. But I still feel when you look at it critically, river port is even better for people doing business in Onitsha, the eastern part, to bring their goods there and move it easily to that place. It's shorter. And it's not safe, it's not like before. Because the road, the east-west road is good, and the volume of trade should increase tremendously before I leave here. And the staff should be happy with me the way I handle their case.
That's much we could bring to you on our interview with our thought manager, engineer Yunusa Ibrahim Anji. Don't forget to join us and visit us on our website www.nigerianport.gov.ng and also join the conversation on all our social media platforms. Let's get more interactive and also watch our previous episode on our YouTube channel. Until I come your way again, same station, same time. Don't forget that the Nigerian Port Authority is committed to operational efficiency and customer-friendly service and also the gateway to our nation's economy. Bye.